you prepared for months, even years. You're excited. The start line of the UTMB is within reach. But before you can cross the start line, there's one final test to pass. And failing this test may mean disqualification. This final test is the gear check. To be honest, I was nervous about my gear before the race. Did I miss something? Am I overpacking? Now that I have the experience and I studied the regulations, I created a guide to ease your nerves. The ultimate source is the UTMB website, but it may not be the easiest to go through. So stay with me on this video. I'll give a clear picture of what and how to pack for the UTMB. So at the end, you can worry less before enjoying the race. Quick disclaimer, requirements could change after I post this video. I'll try to keep the video description updated to note any changes, but refer to the UTMB website for official updates. Also, this list is designed for the UTMB, TDS, CCC courses. There are fewer items for OCC and MCC, which I will add a side note along the video. I'll break down the gear into four sections. Clothing, nutrition and hydration, materials and security. This matches the UTMB classification of items to pack. For each section, I'll talk about the mandatory items. These are items which must be carried or you could be penalized. Then I'll go through the recommended items which will be useful for your race. I'll also touch on the hot and cold weather kit. A full list of the items is available in the video description below. I'll start it all with the bag. This is mandatory gear, but hey, there's no reason you would miss this, right? Your bag will be tagged in a gear check and you must use the same bag for the full race. All the gear will have to fit in this bag or be worn on the body. I used a highly popular Salomon Advanced Skin 12 liter running hydration vest. It's super flexible with multiple compartments, carries a lot and fits tight to your body for easy running. I love using this for short hikes to long trails. Even with intense use over many months, it still feels new. I think it is a worthwhile investment for any trail runner. First out of the four sections is clothing. This is the longest and most complicated section. Follow along and it should make more sense afterwards. The clothing section are items you wear on your body, either your top, bottom or externals. Mandatory items for your upper body starts with the waterproof jacket with hood. The requirement is 10,000 smerber, and sometimes the unit is expressed in millimeters. Technically, this means the material can withstand 10,000 millimeters of water over a day before the water will penetrate through. Or in easier terms, the material is strong enough to withstand a heavy rainstorm for a full day. I use the Ultimate Direction Men's Ultra Jacket V2. It is lightweight and takes very little space, and claims to have 30,000 smurbers. I tested mine in a rainstorm and it really worked. Most times, jackets don't show the smurber rating, and you will have to contact the manufacturer to find out. Here are a few examples of jackets that fulfill the requirement. Next item is the long sleeve top that acts as your second layer. It has to be non-cotton and weigh at least 180 grams for a men's medium size. Alternatively, you could have a warm long sleeved underwear and a durable water repellent windproof jacket. I bought the UTMB top that fits perfectly for this criteria. It's a bit tight in the arms, but it works out as a good souvenir and this was sufficient as my outer layer throughout my night during the CCC. I didn't take my jacket out even when temperatures were at 0 degrees in the mountains. I brought leggings as they are light and easy to carry. I did not use them for CCC, but they would have been taken out if the temperature was slightly lower. I bought a generic brand legging, but a comparable one is the Under Armour Men's Heat Gear Leggings. Then you also need waterproof over trousers, ones you don't need to take your shoes off to put on in the rain. I found these compact and lightweight Ultimate Direction Ultra Pants to work perfect. I've used them many times after CCC in early mornings before races to stay warm and dry. Take them off, put them in the bag and I'm ready to go. For the externals, you need to have a hat that covers your head. I used the buff thermal net beanie, another UTMB souvenir, but also comes with regular colors with buff. It is reversible, extremely warm and lightweight. I wore it throughout the night, kept me warm and I guess I look stylish in them as well. A cap, bandana or buff is mandatory. I opted for a buff because it is so light and versatile. Anyone who has owned one would understand the multiple ways it can be used for both the heat and the cold. The final mandatory item for clothing are waterproof gloves that can keep you warm. 
I used a Salcani 45 convertible glove, which I have used in snowy days. If you receive a message to activate the hot weather kit, you require two clothing items, a Saharan cap that covers the head and neck, and sunglasses. I brought a buff adult Sahara hat to Chamonix, but since the hot weather kit is not activated for the year of my race, I left it in the hotel. The second item in the hot weather kit are sunglasses. I have my trusty and stylish Gooder running sunglasses that I would bring regardless. It stays on no matter how tired or wobbly my head becomes. The cold weather kit was activated for my year. I received this message the night before the race, so my bag had to accommodate these extra items. To be honest, I would have packed a cold weather kit whether or not I received a message, as they made a lot of sense running in the mountains. All three items in the cold weather kit is under this clothing section. First item in the cold weather kit is sunglasses, which is the same as the sunglasses for the hot weather kit. My gooder running sunglasses worked fine for the purpose. Second item is a third warm layer, such as a fleece or a compressible down jacket. This layer is supposed to be above your second layer and below your jacket. I brought a heat tech fleece which I usually wear for snowboarding. I would put it on if it gets uncomfortably cold. Final item in the cold weather kit is robust and closed trail running shoes. For races longer than 10 kilometers, I never tried wearing minimalist or ultralight trail shoes, so I will fulfill this kit requirement anyways. I wore the Ultra King MT and it felt comfortable and reliable for the 20 some hours I had them on for the CCC. The Ultra Lone Peak is also a good alternative since the King MT seems to have disappeared from their product line. Good. As you can hear from the survey, almost every imaginable brand uh, is used by good. runners. Innovate, Ultra, Mafat. <laughs> the recommended clothing is less about recommendation, but more a checklist to remind you on the items you need to pack. Remember to have your first layer running top, running shorts, and socks. I had my running clubs top on, so anything you feel comfortable wearing for hours. For the running shorts, I had a pair of TH Sherpa shorts, which I absolutely love. They can carry extra items, they are comfortable, and it's designed by a trail running company in Hong Kong and ships worldwide. I haven't worn other shorts for trails ever since I bought them two years ago. For the socks, get good quality quick dry socks and avoid cotton. I had a compressed sport pro racing socks. I forgot that I had the socks on and I didn't get blisters in my foot after my run, which are usually good signs for a good sock. I mentioned the shoes in a cold weather kit. I had the Ultra King MT. Clothing is the biggest category, and if you have got this down, the rest is simple. The top, bottom, externals, mandatory, recommended, hot and cold kit should be clear to you now. The second section is nutrition and hydration. These are items that can be taken into your body. You will be bringing as much as needed to fit your own food and drinking plan. I will not cover your individual nutrition plans here as this will take a completely separate video. However, I will touch on what must be brought plus a few recommendations. There are only two items in the mandatory list, food reserve and water. Food reserve is required for emergencies and should not be touched throughout the race. There is no mandatory quantity but there is a recommendation to carry 800 calories broken down into two gels and two bars of 65 grams each. So let's follow that. I packed two gels of 120 calories each, but I had difficulty finding 65 gram bars, so I packed three bars of 45 grams each. That brings the total available calories to over 800. For water, one liter is required. I fill up two 500 milliliter Solomon soft flasks that fit with my bag. I personally plan to use 500 milliliters per hour, and one liter was generally enough between water spots for CCC. In case of activation of the hot weather kit, two liters of water supply is required. I brought two older 500 milliliter water soft flasks to Chamonix just in case. They were left in the hotel as this was not required for my race day. This is all the mandatory items for the nutrition and hydration section. Here are three recommended nutrition items I think you should consider. Gels, if you can handle them, they give you an extra boost. One tip is to not rely on them as your only calorie source. I did have stomach problems after the fifth gel of the day, which was quite unpleasant to certain parts of my body. Then there's a salt stick. 
I keep taking these during my race and they gave me a sustaining boost in energy and morale, especially during the long uphills. A cramp shot is a just-in-case miracle cure. Fortunately, I didn't use it for CCC. However, it gave me a peace of mind in case of cramps. There would be other food or drink items that you carry, which I will not go into in this video. This will be based on your own plans. Next, the materials section, the third out of four sections. In the mandatory gear list, you have to carry two torches and each with spare battery. One of the torches must have over 200 lumens. For the stronger torch, I used a Nightcore NU32 550 lumen LED rechargeable headlamp. It had a good balance between weight and power. Unfortunately, it lasted only two thirds of the night in the strongest setting, so I took out my second torch for the rest of the time. You see information about my two torches on screen now. The Nightcore torch uses a power bank as its spare battery. I brought the light and slim Nightcore MB10000 ultra lightweight battery bank and it was used as backup power for my torch, my phone, my GoPro and my watch. Its large capacity means I don't need to worry about running out of power, even through two nights. The next materials mandatory item is your identity document. Just make sure it is put in a Ziploc bag or a waterproof bag so it doesn't get wet. Another item that is mandatory is a personal cup with a 15 centiliter minimum. This cannot be your water flask that carries the 1 liter water. It is one of the most used items in the whole list and I've used it for refreshing coke and warm soup. Most people just hang it outside of the bag. It takes no space and it is a good environmentally friendly alternative to paper cups. The bag is the final mandatory item listed under materials. I've already covered it earlier on, so I won't repeat. This covers the mandatory items for materials, but it is recommended to bring the following with you as well. It just makes the experience a whole lot more enjoyable. For dinner, bring a reusable bowl or for my case a second personal cup. I used it for dinner at Champagne Lac to enjoy the pasta and hot soup at the same time. I bought one of these for 5 euros in Chamonix before the race. It was good for hot and cold drinks and highly light and compressible. Also bring a camping spork for the pasta. I brought a light and sturdy UCO utility spork 3 in 1 combo. For your body, bring Vaseline or anti-chafe. Anyone who has done ultra marathons would be familiar with chafing. I don't think I need much explanation on why anti-chafes are an ultra marathon runner's secret friend. Without it, Ouch. embrace pain. It is recommended to bring at least 20 euros for emergencies. If the hot weather kit is activated, you will need to bring sunscreen as well. Bringing poles is not a must, but highly recommended. I took them out after the first kilometer and never put them back. The poles definitely helped my legs survive the full course of up and downs. I carried these Zen 1 Ultra Light Trekking Poles, which are really light. I don't have much to complain about. The Black Diamond Distance Carbon Z Trekking Poles is another good option that is also very light. Remember that if you use poles, you must carry them for the full course. You cannot leave them at an A station or throw them away mid-run. The GPS watch is another recommended item. I have my trusty Garmin 4Runner 245. I turned off the heart rate monitor and it lasted over 24 hours covering the full CCC. I have my power bank as backup. Totally optional, I added my filming gear that created my video on CCC that you should watch for the CCC experience. I carried a GoPro Max 360 camera, the GoPro Max Grip tripod, two spare batteries which I didn't need to use, and a 256GB microSD card. It adds to the weight, but I was happy that my experience could be recorded. Finally, bring a trash bag to keep the trails clean. This bag was provided with the race pack. The last of four sections is the security gear. It is mandatory to bring a smartphone. It needs to stay on for the course and have international roaming. Save the security number given in the race pack on your phone and download the live run app that can track your location while you are in the race. My battery bank also provides backup power for my phone. A survival blanket, self-adhesive elasticated bandage and a whistle is also mandatory equipment. My whistle is attached to the bag. Your race bib must be carried. Not mandatory, but I also added a few pieces of band-aid. So here's the list of all the gear for UTMB that should be similar to many trail races. I've organized it so you can see what is mandatory, what is recommended, what I needed for the hot weather kit and cold weather kit. Next, I'll show how I pack my gear so it is organized and easy to access. Categorize your gear into five categories. 
The unused items that will not be touched throughout the race unless there is an emergency, such as your survival blanket, bandage, ID, cash, whistle, and food reserve. Then the night items that will be taken out when it gets dark. These are mandatory gear in the materials section. Third, cold items that will be taken out when it is cold. That will be most of the mandatory gear in the clothing section. The immediate use items are items you need easy access to. And the wear items which you wear throughout the race like your running shirt, shorts, shoes, buff and GPS watch. Prepare three waterproof bags, which can be Ziploc bags. Pack the unused items into the first bag. Then pack the night items into the second bag and then pack the cold items into the third bag. The immediate use items will be in different parts of the front pocket depending on your needs. The wear items are remade, ready for the morning of the race day. Thanks for watching this far into the video. Now I hope you can pass your final test before the start line, take the stress away so you can run happy throughout the course. Some of you travel long distances to Chamonix and it is possible you left some items behind. But don't worry, Chamonix is one of the trail running capitals in the world and you can easily find the gear you need in town at a reasonable price. Now you understand how to break up the gear in sections, what's mandatory and how to pack in an organized way. You should be able to pass a gear check if you follow this guide, which is available for you to download and print out in the video description below. This video is made for UTMB in 2022. If you are from the future, the gear requirement might change, so check my video description for the latest updates. I also have links to the gear I used below. If you haven't yet, watch my video on the CCC experience to find out what to expect during the course. I'm happy to learn better packing techniques, and I hope to see you comment on your packing tricks. I wish you all the best in your UTMB experience, and I hope I helped make it better. See you in my next video.